Flight 209er, you are cleared for takeoff. Roger. Huh? LA departure frequency 123.9er. Roger. Huh? Request vector. Over. What? Flight 209er, clear for vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Now I radio clearance. Over. That's Clarence. Over. Over. Roger. Huh? Roger, over. What? Huh? Who? Hey. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! Check out my new weapon. Piranha gun! Oh, yes! Fires live piranhas. Ever seen one before? No, you haven't. I invented it. I'm doing a demonstration. Oh, ow! Shoot! It's so difficult sometimes to get the piranha back inside of Woo! Point one. Vector is in the plane. <laughs> Roger. Yeah. So two-dimensional <laughs> two vectors is what we're going to deal with. Two-dimensional meaning that we can talk about them on like the X, Y plane. Yes, because could you have three-dimensional? We could. We yeah. could talk about vectors in a three-dimensional space, and it makes it a little bit more complicated, but actually <laughs> a not. A slight skosh, but not, not horribly so. Not a ton so. more, but we'll be focusing on two dimensions because it, it's easier. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Right, and it's what we're studying. Yeah. Two-dimensional stuff. Okay, so whenever we have a vector, we denote it in, here we go, component form as A comma B. Notice we've got these like arrow they're, brackets. They're, they're pointy, and let me tell you, on anything you turn into us, it's a vector. It needs to be pointy. Yeah, no parentheses. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, point. that's a point. Okay, but a vector is. is something that has magnitude and direction, <laughs> and, and it needs to have these. <laughs> magnitude and direction. Yeah. So the numbers A and B are the components of the vector. And in fact, the first one is like is the X component and the second one is the Y component. Because even though it's not a point whenever we whenever we write it, it you, kind you of still ha it's guides where the vector goes. Right. So we still have to have that information. Right. So the standard representation of the vector A B is the error from the origin to the point A B. The magnitude of V is the length of the area, arrow. And the direction of V is the direction in which the arrow is pointing. Right. The vector zero, which this is bold. Anytime you see something bold, they're talking about a vector. Um, and so if we were writing it, because it's hard for us to necessarily make sure that something looks bold like the zero, the other way to write it is to put this little uh, Ar arrow, arrow line. Thingy. Yeah, or half arrow it. line or some yeah. sort of line arrowy pointing to the right. Yes, that, that means yeah. this is the zero vector. Um, and we won't deal a whole lot with the zero vector, but there is. It comes a zero up every vector. now and then, but you know, not super often. Okay, so vectors can start at points other than the origin. Um, the vector AB, for example, and that that's a case where I've got a little line with an arrow over it, has an initial point A and a terminal point B. So the thing that comes first is the initial point. The thing that comes second is the terminal point. Start and stop. And it's pictured here below. And then usually it's best for us to put the vector in component form using the head minus tail rule, which right. is right here. And basically, head minus tail rule, if I may be so bold, yeah, go for is it. slope. It's where you stop minus where you start for each coordinate. It is like slope, except you're not dividing them. Right, except we're not dividing. Yeah, so you take the x minus the x, but you always use the second one minus the first one and the second one minus the first one. So down here on our example, if we want to show that these two are equivalent, uh, the vector AB, which is pictured here, and then the vector PQ, which we don't have drawn. Right. Well, one way to do that is to use the head minus tail rule. That Let's sounds put these like a great. Form. Yeah. So A B. So what's your vector, <laughs> Victor? My name's not Victor. Roger over. Okay. So we do uh, the second one, which is negative one <clears throat> minus negative four. Now minus negative four though. So be careful here. It's not just a straight up minus four. -ish. Right. It's a minus negative four situation. And then six minus two. So that gives us, for A, B, uh, negative 1 plus 4. 3. 6 minus 2. 4. Bam. Okay. And then for P, Q. Oh, there's another one? Yeah. How did I miss that? 
Um, I only see one on there. Well, I didn't draw the other one because then it would be super obvious. Oh, oh, don't draw it. Don't draw okay. it. Let it be a surprise. Okay, so PQ is 2, negative 1, comma, 5, comma, 3. So negative 1. Nope, that's not no, right. That's backwards, not the second backwards. one. backwards. 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2. And then... 3 minus negative 1. 3 minus negative 1. I smell something the same. So that's 3... Three, four. Comma, four. And so we just sh we just showed, shown? We've shown that these are the same because we ended up with the same thing in component form. If we draw PQ the way it is, then this is where P is, and then Q is... Is that, is that a... Is that a <laughs> just ignore the is infinity that a, symbol. Is that a figure eight? I don't Almost know. Almost sideways? See how they look the same except for one was drawn as a... <laughs> one of them's a straight the line and one of them's almost a straight line. Right, but they are the same. And basically what component form does, just so you know, is it moves your initial point over here to zero, zero, so that then we would draw three comma four. Okay, we just moved. Looky there, they're all, they're all the same now. Yeah, they're, they're we all just identical. moved it to right there. Yeah. So that's, that's to start off, put it in component form. Um, if it's not in component form, everything we do will need it in right. component form. Right, that's correct. Now, vectors have this thing called magnitude. Distance. Yeah. Magnitude equals distance. Yes, it's talking about the length of our vector, which tends to be um, an amount of something like force or speed or something like that. Um, that's like use that. the force like you are understanding vectors. No, like when you put, well, kind of, when you push something and you use the force. Never mind. <laughs> If v, you understand vectors. Okay, if V is represented by the arrow from this point to this point, then we can say the magnitude. And so notice these absolute value bars around our vector V, those don't mean absolute value. They, Whenever we're talking about a vector being inside, that's magnitude. Which is distance. Yes. Which, which is, is what absolute value is. Yes, it, yes it is. But it's that kind of. Oh. Kind of, yeah. So... Um, and so this right here is just the distance formula, which we all know and love. Um, but if you have the vector written in component form, all you have to do is basically the Pythagorean theorem. And since most of the time either they'll give it to us in component form or that's our first step is to change the component form, you really just need to know the second way. The second way usually is the way that works. Yeah, because like for example too, the problem says find the component form and magnitude. Well, once we you've got component form, Bam. Then you just have to do the second one, not yeah, the first one. Sounds so, like a great deal. Component form, head minus Let's do tail. HMT. Huh? Oh, hey, yeah, HMT. Head minus you tail. Totally threw me off there. So the vector Let's PQ. Let's do HTML. <laughs> do you get it? HTML? No? Uh, no? You don't get it? What, what are you doing? Why, why is that happening? I, I don't know. Try again. Okay, there we go. Okay, PQ. Uh, so that's the Stop second minus one. start. So negative five minus, minus negative three. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then two minus four. Stop minus start. Always go stop minus start. Right. Life is easier that so way. So this was negative two. Oh, I was gonna say this is this. So what he's saying is the start. It's the start. That's the stop. So stop minus start. Okay. Uh, so what is it? Uh, negative two. Negative two, comma, negative two. Okay, so if There's we, your vector, Victor. If we Pythagorean theorem on this to find the magnitude, so here's absolute value around our vector PQ, then what we're going to do is the square root of... How am I <laughs> writing diagonally? <laughs> it's, that's is, a negative vector, I think, uh, K. Steve. Pythagorean theorem, where this is A, this is B, we're doing A squared plus B squared. Make sure when you plug in negatives, you put them in parentheses. So. Yeah, if you don't, it'll ruin your square root. Yeah, so f square root of 4 plus 4, uh, which is square root of 8. If we want to simplify that square root, which we do, right? Uh, we can, yeah. I two mean, squared to 2. 2 squared to 2. Mm -hmm. That one's not a hard one to Because that simplify, splits up yeah. into 4 and 2. Yeah. So you take the square root of 4 and get two square roots of 2. So that's, that's the magnitude. Here's the component form. Done with that example. Okay. Well, vector, vector addition and scalar multiplication. So if we have these two vectors, u1, u2, 
is U, V1, V2 is V, and then let's say that we have K, which is just a real number, which is also known as scalar. Scalar is another word for just a normal number. Just any, as any number you can think of. Compared to us talking about a vector, which has two components. Right. Okay, so we can do two things basically in this section. We can do vector addition, so the sum also known as the resultant of the vectors. You simply add the x components and the y components, and then your answer is a vector. Okay. Um, the product, so that's like head plus tail, tail head thing. It kind, yeah, it's like okay. adding them together, head right. plus tail. So, so if we have two vectors and we're putting them together, we, okay. we right. do add them. And we'll right. look down here at the bottom at what is visually going on here in a second. That sounds great. Okay, so the product of the scalar k, so if we have some number and we're timesing it into vector u, it's just like a distributive property kind of thing. You multiply the k times the x component and k times it's the y It's really component. similar to what you've done with before with a matrix. If there's a number right in front of that matrix a scalar, you multiply it with every uh, number inside the matrix, and it's a similar situation Indeed, here. Indeed, it is similar. So here we've got these two vectors, u and v. They want us to find the following things. So the first thing is u plus v. So we would add our x components and our y components. Now, is order important when you add these guys? Well, you can you can do 4 plus, four plus a negative 1. That's fine, because addition is commutative. Right. So you can do it in any order. All right. But you do need your x components to be first and your y components that to be is second. correct yes yes that's, my yeah that's, that's what, standard right thingy majigger three comma ten standard thingy majigger whenever All we right. look at this uh visually so down here ge geometrically representing this um our first vector negative one three is this in uh in red on my screen which has the long dashes the second vector, what we would do to add it to this first one is we'd actually stick its first point at the end of the first vector. So the tail yeah. at the head. Yeah, you stick the tail of the second vector at the head of the first vector, and then you draw out that vector, which was 4, 7, so write 4, up 7. And so the resultant vector, so the result of this addition, is the line from this, the very first start to the very last end. That bright green guy. And if you look, this really is um, 3, comma 10. That vector, which is what we got. Look at that. Um, next. Who knew? Three times u. So three times our vector for u, which is negative one comma three. It just distributes in. So that's negative, negative three, three times nine. Just three, three times all those things. Negative Bless three you. Comma nine. Okay. So, and geometrically here's what's going on. We start off with the vector negative one comma three. And what we're doing is we are multiplying um, by the three. length of it by three. So right? we would have three of those, right? Right. So yeah, you could actually, we could have drawn it slightly different where, look, we've got three of these vectors added onto each other. Son of a gun. That's cool. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. Two right. U minus V. I don't see any complications there. We're just combining the first two things we did. It gets kind of complicated. Oh, more geometric complications. Two okay. times U minus V. Now, mm. one thing you need to understand, well, you don't need to understand it, but I'm just going to throw this out here, is that technically there's no such thing as subtracting vectors. What you do oh. is, you, is you add Mind and blown. distribute a negative one. Okay, we, we have vector addition. We don't really have vector subtraction. You multiply through with negative one, and then you add the two vectors together. I don't... It's just I, like one of those mathematical technic technicalities. Really, subtraction doesn't exist. We're what? Always, we're always just adding a negative. Who are you? Subtraction doesn't exist. You can add, subtract, multiply, divide. Sorry, this is a tangent that I didn't really mean to get us off on. Okay, so right. I just distributed the two, distributed a negative one. Now I need to add these vectors together. So that's going to be negative two plus a negative four, which is negative six. Six plus a negative seven, which is negative one. So this is, the, this is our end vector. So geometrically, here's what's going on. We've got u, which is... In purple here on my screen we're multiplying it by 2 which gets it to here so that's this vector then if on top of that you were to put 4 7 that would go this way what a multiplying by a negative does is it makes it go the exact opposite direction so from the green we go orange and so our resultant vector is this black one down here negative which six, matches what uh, the math says yes so that's how that's how we roll with vector addition and scalar multiplication these things called unit vectors, which are vectors that have the length of one unit. Uh, so let me guess. 
we're going to have a vector of a length one unit and call it a unit vector then. That's, yes, that's exactly what I just said. Oh. And what these have to do with is basically if we have a unit vector, we can talk about the direction that vector is. Uh, yeah. We can make long vectors short and have a direction yeah, that's a, a direction unit long? Yeah, it's a direction okay. vector. All right. So I we've can got work this, with that. this formula up here. Okay. Which these are saying, these last two things are saying the same thing. They're just simplified a little bit differently. A little differently. Um, okay. I like let's, the let's second Let's do one. Way. Well, let's, let's work one out and we can see how all this goes together. Okay. Well, I, I, it's really tiny up there. Yeah, here it is. Oh, okay. Go. You're right. Okay. So what we have to do is find the magnitude of this vector to start off with. So, I know how to do that. Yeah. We did that a couple slides ago. You're going to square the first guy, square the second guy. And for Pete's sakes... Make sure that the negatives are inside the parentheses. Right, so that's 9 plus 4, which is 13, so square root of 13. And, and leave it like that. Like, please don't decimal this out and get some decimally thing. Don't, don't do it. Don't do this it. This is the magnitude of this vector they gave us. We want a unit vector that's in this direction. So if we drew it, negative 3, 2 would be this way. So we want it to be in this direction, but only with a length of 1, not square root of 13. Right. So to do that, we take square root of 13 is almost a length of over 4. square root of 13, and we multiply it into our vector, negative 3, comma 2. We're not, we're not done here, no, though. No, we've got to we, we got to actually use that as a scalar and multiply it in there. Right. We're allowed to do that. We you just, gotta, you got to put it in there. So that's negative 3 over square root of 13 comma, 2 over square root of 13. That's it, right there. There's your unit vector in the direction of negative 3, 2. Right. And it's exactly one unit long. You know, you could check that by doing the, Pythagorean doing the theorem magnitude and Pythagorean thing. theorem. You maybe. could. You could check it if you wanted to. If you wanted to rationalize it, that's what it would look like. Uh, the first one's okay for us, though. Yeah, the first one's fine. Um, so one thing that they do with these unit vectors is there's a different notation besides our component form with our arrow brackets that they like to use. Basically, they talk about two unit vectors. I is a unit vector that's going straight to the right, okay, and is one unit long. J, so this is I. J is a unit vector going straight up and it's one unit long. These are the standard unit vectors, and what we can do is we can make any vector into what's called a linear combination of these two vectors. Linear combination would be a line, yes. linear, yes. line, Yes. and then we would use whatever numbers we were given for our vector okay. as part of those components for that. So an example of this is that 3i plus 4j is simply talking about the vector 3 comma 4. Any of the vectors we've used so far, we could instead write it like So, this. okay, just make me smile and write our unit vector there for negative square root of 3. This oh, one? look, there's a this smile. One? Yeah. Okay. What's that one in ij? Well, let's let's see here. We would put we would drop the arrow brackets and we right. would write negative 3 over the square root of 13 i plus 2 over the square root of 13 j. There you go, a standard unit vector right there. i and j are the unit vectors. These these are vectors technically, although we don't necessarily normally write the vector symbol over them. Right. Okay. But, but they're bold. Are, they're in vectors. bold, which means vector. Right. And so um, don't, whenever we're doing stuff with these, this is not I like the imaginary number. No, it's really no, 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 no. This is that it's this, the same yeah. letter. Except there's a ve this is a vector. This is a vector. N and if you look in your book, those eyes are not usually bold. Yeah. Wait. I'm pretty sure. I'll just double. I just have. I don't think have, they bold uh, the eyes. I'll just double check. I don't think they bold the eyes in this section at all. Okay. Just uh, let me just real quick. But really, here here's my point. If you want to make this easy on yourself, every time that you see something written like this, 3i plus 4j, immediately write it in component form, and then you don't have to deal with it. If it asks you to have your answer as a linear combination of i's and j's, well, you switch it back to a linear combination of i's and j's by putting an i with your x, a j with your y, and adding them together. Hold on, I've almost got it. You're nowhere near. 6.1. No, I, but I was going to look up the complex numbers page 53. That's not what I'm concerned about. No, no, but look at this, because th I'm pretty sure... No, you're you're absolutely right. They don't bold, look, they that's don't not bold, a bold those eyes, but I don't think what they you... bold the other eyes either. What? Yes, they do. Let me, let me just hold your horses. I... Hold them. 
Oh, they do. They okay, do. see? They do bold them. They so, do bold the I's and J's in this section. Hmm, who was right? 